So you want to know the facts and laws regarding your new drone. In the past few years, and even in the past few months, the rules and regulations regarding drone use in the United States have changed a lot. Countless misleading news articles, news headlines, and forum posts have led to lots of users spreading bad information. Today, I'm going to try to help you sort out the truth. This video pertains to recreational users only. If you're planning to get paid for your flight, furthering a business, or in any way helping someone get money, this isn't for you. Go look at my part 107 video. The two documents I'll be citing the most here are HR 658, FAA 2014-0396, which is the FAA's interpretation of HR 658, and the AMA's Aircraft Safety Code. Link to all these are in the description below. In the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012, Congress ruled that the Federal Aviation Administration could not regulate hobbyist drone use. Quote, the Federal Aviation Administration may not proclamate any rule or regulation regarding model aircraft, unquote. This sentence is the one that's been repeated over and over again by news outlets and pilots alike. They think that if the FAA can't regulate hobbyist drone use, that there's no rules that apply to them and they can do whatever they want. And you know what, that'd be a fair assumption if you read this quote only out of context. The problem with that argument is that to be considered a hobbyist in the eyes of Congress in the first place, there's a list of qualifications you have to meet. The legislation is literally laid out to say the FAA can't regulate hobbyists, and then goes on to say what you have to do in order to be a hobbyist. So even though the FAA can't regulate hobbyists, Congress can regulate what a hobbyist even is, and they do. So those are the rules we'll be taking a look at today, because those are the rules that we have to follow as hobbyists to even be hobbyists. So, to be considered a hobbyist, you must 1. Fly solely for recreational use. Now, I touched on this in the very beginning of the video, but if you're getting money for your flight, furthering a business, or helping someone else get money in any way with your drone, you do not fulfill this requirement. This includes things like monetizing YouTube videos. But if you're flying just purely for hobbyist use or for fun, you're good. Two, we'll skip this one for now. Trust me, we'll get right back to it. Three, your drone weighs under 55 pounds. And if it doesn't, then it's been checked out by a certified community-based organization. These are like legitimate RC groups that can certify your drone. Most of you, this probably won't be a problem. These are flying normal drones. Four, and I quote, the aircraft is operated in a manner that does not interfere with and gives way to any manned aircraft. This is pretty straightforward. You demand aircraft to keep your eyes and ears open at all times. It's your responsibility. Five, when you're operating within five miles of an airport, you call them and notify them of your flight. Have your coordinates and the time of your flight ready on hand when you call them. If you're not sure whether you're within five miles of an airport, you can use an app like AirMap. While I have my own issues with it, and it's certainly not perfect, it's usually great for hobbyists. Just make sure you have the right layers enabled, and if you fall within these orange circles, you'll need to call that airport and tell them. Sometimes AirMap even has the phone number right there for you. Remember, they maintain the right to tell you not to fly. So as long as you're following those rules, you're considered a hobbyist and the FAA can't touch you. But we never went over that second qualification. Now the second qualification says, quote, the aircraft is operated in accordance with a community-based set of safety guidelines and within the programming of a nationwide community-based organization. So what in the world does that mean? It certainly seems pretty vague. If you didn't know, there are organizations that you can join for model aircraft, one of the most popular being the Academy for Model Aeronautics, or the AMA. Now, in order to be considered a hobbyist, you have to find one of these groups and follow their safety guidelines. You don't have to be a member of such group as long as you're following their rules and guidelines. Like I said, the AMA is one of the most popular of these community-based organizations, or CBOs, and the only one to my knowledge that the FAA has actually acknowledged as such. In fact, the guidelines the FAA has on their website for hobbyist drone use come right from the AMA. So assuming we're going under the AMA's guidelines, here are the rules. Number one, fly at or below 400 feet AGL. Number two, keep your drone within the line of sight. Number three, never fly near other aircraft. Number four, Never fly over stadiums, sports events, or over crowds of people. Five, never fly near emergency response efforts. Six, never fly under the influence. And seven, be aware of airspace requirements. Now this is mostly referring to TFRs, or temporary flight restrictions. These are times when important things are happening in that airspace, like big sporting events, or maybe someone important is flying in a town. The FAA can shut down an entire zone of airspace, and you can't fly within those. Again, usually apps like AirMap will help point out those TFRs to you. Now, if you're following those rules, you fulfill requirement number two, because the community-based organization's guidelines you're following is from the AMA. Now, there are other CBOs. It's just that at this point in time, we're not exactly sure which ones would hold up in a court case and which ones wouldn't. 
The reason that I'm talking about AMA and the reason that most of us use the AMA is because it's the only one that the FAA has recognized as a CBO and that they point out. If you decide to use any other CBO, have fun, but do your homework and make sure they're legitimate. So, fit into those regulations prescribed by Congress, follow the AMA's guidelines, or another CBO if you want to, and then you'll be considered a hobbyist and be flying completely legally. Below, I attached a link to a summary sheet of all the rules I mentioned. It's not legally comprehensive, but if you want to stick this in your drone case or somewhere you're going to see it all the time, it is a pretty good summary of the rules you're going to need to follow to fly legally as a hobbyist. I hope it helped you out in some way. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for watching and fly safe.